In this lesson, we're going to look at doing something a little bit more substantial with Podman. And so we're going to look at actually running an Apache HTTP server using the Podman CLI. And so I'm here on Docker Hub, which is hub.docker.com, and I'm going to search for the HTTPD container image. And we can see the HTTPD container image, which has 10 million downloads here. And if I click that, we can see that the HTTPD container image has a number of tags, and it also has a set of instructions for how to actually use this image for your own projects. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to do these same steps, but we're going to use Podman instead of Docker to do these. And so we can see that a number of things. We can see that Podman works incredibly similar to Docker and that we can follow a lot of the same instructions that we would run for Docker with Podman. But we can also see more about how Podman works and if you're not familiar with Docker we can also show more about how uh, how to actually use Podman for some non-trivial tasks that might help you in your own work. And so we're going to move this window to the side. And what I've done is I've started a little project here. So I've got this folder called Web Server Test. And inside of here, I've made a Docker file. And I've got a public HTML directory. In the public HTML directory, I have an index.html. So if I cat that out, we can see that we have a little bit of HTML here. And it says head, title, um, body. And so it's got the title of my awesome website. And it's got a body of welcome to my awesome website. So if I open that in Firefox, just doing a Firefox index.html, in index.html, we can actually see that open in Firefox. So I'll move that back into view here. And we can see that it has a H2 element of welcome to my awesome website. And so what we want to do is we want to take this HTML that we've created and we want to serve it up with the HTTPD container using Podman. And so let's move that to the side. If it'll cooperate. And we can look at our Docker file that we've created. So we're going to cat that out. And basically we've created a Docker file with these following contents here. We've at one from line that says from HTTPD colon 2.4 which is the vert the tag that we want to pull we then so we want to use that as the base basis for our container image then we want to copy over the public html directory into user local apache 2 ht docs on the container image so we want to actually uh, build this image using podman and when we build this image, it's actually going to follow the steps that are listed in the Docker file. And so this is very similar to how we would do this uh, using Docker. And instead, we're just going to use Podman. So Podman. So first of all, let's look at Podman. We're just going to run Podman again and look at the various commands available to us. And one of the commands available is build. And it says build an image using instructions from a Docker from Docker files, and that's what we're trying to do here. So if we do a podman build dash dash help, we can look at the options available, and we see that the way we invoke this is we do podman build container options the context directory, and in this case and in Linux the context directory is a dot because we want to build the Docker file that's in the current directory that we're in. So we would have podman build space dot, which would build the Docker file that's in the local directory. And we want to put some options here. And we can give it a dash dash tag, which will give it a name. And that should be the tag name to apply to the built image. And as you can see, our commands come first. So let's do podman build dash dash tag. And we're going to give it a name of localhost slash my awesome website and colon latest and then we're also going to um, do a dot to build the docker file that's in the current directory and so we're going to hit enter and we see that it's actually running the docker file that we've outlined and so the first step of the docker file 
is to pull the HTTPD image. Um, and I've already downloaded it, so that's why it goes fairly quickly, but yours might take a minute. And so we pull that HTTPD image down, it's the tag of 2.4. Then we copy the public HTML directory that we had to user local Apache 2 HT docs. And we've committed that as localhost my awesome website latest. So if I do a Docker image, uh, sorry, Podman images, I should see that I have a name here of my awesome website latest, the image ID, it was created 33 seconds ago, and it's 170 megs because the HTTPD container is actually fairly large. But we're going to actually follow the instructions that were outlined on Docker Hub for how to run this. It says docker run minus dit name, the port, the version, or sorry, volume that we want to map into. That's actually a valid Docker file, but we've actually made an image. So let's do docker run minus dit name. We'll give it a name. We'll map the port. So the port on the host will be 8080 and the port inside of the container will be 80. And we'll use the image that we created. So let's actually try this. And we're going to do a podman run minus D. And first of all, before we do all this, let's do a dash dash help again on podman run. And let's look at the various options it's telling us to do, just so that we understand what it is that we're doing. And so minus a dash D is run container in background and print container ID. And then I is interactive. And a T is allocated TTY. So let's do podman run minus DIT, give it a name. And so the name that we're going to do is my running website, do a dash P, and the port that we're going to map. So the first port, the first thing here is the port on the host. And so the port on the host is going to be 8080. And then the port inside of the container that we're mapping is port 80. And we can actually map as many ports as we want. Um, but So this is saying that the port on the host is 8080 and that maps to port 80 inside of the container. And then we're going to give it the name of the container, the, the name of the image that we made, which is localhost slash my awesome website. And the tag of that is latest. So let's run that. And it says port bindings are not yet supported by rootless containers. And so that's actually um, something that we can't actually do in a rootless container yet. So we're actually going to have to do that as root. Um, so that's a bit of a drawback. So let's look at the, and hopefully that will be fixed. Uh, eventually, but we're kind of on the cutting edge here, so let's go to root. So right now we're in the root user, and we're actually going to go to home, dma, work, that web server test, and we're just going to rebuild that podman build dot or dash tag, and we're actually going to give it our name again. Do that. Latest. And we'll do dot. So as you can see, that's now building it as root. And it's pulling it down. So we didn't actually have the HTTPD container downloaded this time. So it's actually downloading that from the Docker registry. It's pulling all those different blobs down, and then it's actually going to um, copy the index .h, the folder of the index.html inside of the container, and then it'll commit that as localhost my awesome website test. So now as root, we can actually run this container image um, that we made, and I'm going to actually just run this using Podman again. And we will do that like this. And so now that is actually running our container that we made. 
And so if I go to Firefox and I go to localhost 8080, what I should see is welcome to my awesome website. And so basically what we've done is we are actually running our container in a detached manner and we're serving up our index.html that we made um, using Podman and we're actually running this as a root container. Um, we tried to run it as a non-root container but what happened there is apparently the port bindings are not supported for rootless containers yet. So that's something to keep in mind. Hopefully that will be fixed uh, in the future. Podman is still under active development and so that's one of those things that we're just you know it's just not available yet and I can kind of understand why um, but there are other things we can do with just a pure rootless container and so that's basically running an HDBD web server using Podman and doing that with a container running as root but without needing the daemon and so we can actually do a, do a Podman container list here and we see that we have that my awesome website running the command was HTBD foreground because that was the command that the HTBD container base image specifies to run and we didn't override that with a command of our own and it's actually mapping the port on the host 8080 to port 80 in the container and that's actually mapping that port as a TCP port. So I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next video.